everybody, Chris with Up North Air Gunner. So I just got back from the most epic air gunner deer camp ever. So this was the funnest hunt that I think I've ever been on. So this was all hosted by Andrew Higgins. And if you're part of the Lethal Air uh, online group, you'll know Andrew. He's an awesome, awesome guy. He was able to host this for us. He cooked us dinner. He cooked us breakfast. Awesome camping spot. It was absolutely fantastic. So thank you, Andrew, for uh, hosting this deer camp. So really the purpose of the Michigan early antlerless deer season is to really bring that deer population down. Um, a lot of these farmers, especially out in Eastern Michigan where we were, so out in the Thumb area of Michigan, yeah, so yeah, a lot of agriculture, little beans, little corn, little ball, ball back, you know, yeah. these does are just oh, wiping out corn. acres of yeah, agriculture. So the farmers really appreciate us coming in and thinning down that deer herd. And so I saw firsthand, so as Andy was showing us around the property and scouting out the different places we were gonna be uh, Saturday morning, we could see some of that deer damage firsthand. I mean, there'd be corners of the beans fields where there'd just be like absolutely wiped out, nothing. There'd be just rows of corn just completely wiped out by the deer. So it's really important for hunters like ourselves to get out there and do this type of conservation work. Great to have uh, fresh meat in the freezer, the venison that these deer provide. Um, I plan on getting hopefully more than one this year. So for this hunt, we had the uh, Tacticam Spotter LR camera with us. And what this is, is a video camera that will mount onto any spotting scope with uh, a lot of different adapters. And for me, Eastern Michigan deer hunting is a lot different than the deer hunting that I typically do up north uh, in the thick woods or in central Michigan, a lot of swamps that I hunt. So a lot of the fields out here are wide open with hundreds and hundreds of yards basically uh, where the deer are coming into the field. So having the spotter LR available to identify you know, find those runways that are coming into the field without actually stepping into the field and spooking the deer and being able to scout out these positions from the edge of the road, from the corners of the field. So it was a really great tool to have access to these last two days. So a huge shout out to Tacticam. Really well done on this tool, love it. Let's check out the hunt. I'm gonna kind of take you through everything that went down. A lot of shenanigans going on, a lot of stories, and it was absolutely awesome. So let's check it out. So first up, we've got uh, Caleb and Andrew Ring and Steel. All right, one, two, three. <laughs> so next we've got Chad ringing the steel plate there at 100 yards. And this guy, <laughs> this guy can shoot. Tim Davis, 178 yards, tomato, check it out. <laughs> what was this little top of a paint cam? Yeah. So for me, I brought more gear than I needed. As usual, I had a ton of different guns with me. I had the Air Force Texan 50 cal. I had the uh, Avonix 50 cal pistol Rex with the African Air Ordnance uh, power kit on it. And then I also had the Lethal Air 50 cal, and this thing is a beast. And I have this gun doped all the way out to about 175 yards. This thing is an absolute monster. I'll be slinging the uh, 525 grain Mr. Hollow Point slugs. And yeah, so we needed to get some rest, head to the field the next day. Let's see what we can do. So Tim was one of the first to get on the board with this shot on a doe with his uh, Air Force Texan. So with that awesome shot, uh, Tim is going back home to Indiana with some pure Michigan venison. Congratulations, Tim. So next up was Caleb Simon overlooking the bean field in a pop-up tent. So <laughs> check this out. So this guy right here is literally the bearded buck magnet from Virginia. Comes up here to Michigan to go deer hunting and sees more bucks in one morning than I saw in the last two years. <laughs>
so after the parade of bucks finally stopped for Chad, he was able to get a group of doe to come in. Check out what happens next. He's shooting Lehigh Defense F5 air gun slugs. Now these are the controlled fracturing slugs. Watch what happens to this doe. This is absolutely savage. Yeah, All right. yeah, go ahead. Oh my gosh, dude, look just Chad. <laughs> right, looking. Hey, wow. Get up. It's like the hallway. It's crazy. Right down that. Right down oh, she's a big one. Dude, nice. Nice shot, Chad. Thank you. Just laying in a pool of blood, man. Wow. That's around. a big doe, man. Yeah, she's a good size doe. Yep. First morning here with Andrew. Right. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. Really appreciate you letting us come up, me and my son. Yep. Uh, first deer for me with the Umex hammer and the new Lehigh defense rounds. Yeah. So the proof is in the pudding right there. Yes, sir. So, Chad, so what is this? That's the penetrator, right? Yes. That's the uh, that's the other side, so it was a complete pass-through. Right, and that's both the shoulders, 220 grain. Yeah. Uh, so now we just got to find the pedals that broke off in there and see what kind of damage is done. Right, but they're in there that's for sure. A, that's some awesome ammo, man. Sweet. And Andy was able to get on the board in the first day and even showed us a little bit of a trick on how to get these deer back to deer camp without having to drag them so far through the field. This is how the boys in Michigan do it? Yeah, Andrew Higgins, Chris Turek's truck, which is a piece of crap, by the way. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we had a guy named uh, Russ who was a brand new uh, air gunner, had never shot a big bore air gun before. Shot it uh, on Friday night, and by Saturday morning at dawn, he had a deer on the ground. It was absolutely awesome. So I was the only one that got skunked on day one, but I knew we saw so many deer out there, so I knew that day two was going to bring me better luck. So yeah, it was a long day, a lot of dragon deer out of the woods. Time to get some rest and get rested up for day two. So this was the evening hunt uh, on day two. Uh, didn't see anything in the morning. A lot of bucks were coming into the field. Hadn't seen any does yet. And so I was sitting up in an elevated stand looking over a bean field. And on the other side of the field, about a quarter mile away, uh, Caleb Simon from Lethal Air was in that pillbox. And what was awesome about this is he and I were able to tag team uh, a hunt on this field where I was able to see things he wasn't able to see or he was able to see corners of the field that I just couldn't see through the brush in the elevated blind because the uh, leaves are still on the trees. And so we're basically texting back and forth the entire time sending intel on the deer locations. So the first deer that we had to actually pin down in the field, uh, when, when Caleb actually walked into his blind, the deer saw him, I think she winded him, she laid down. Here she is right there. Oh, she's walking, here we go, here we go. So after Caleb got his uh, deer on the ground, he stayed put because we actually had a lot of deer coming in and out of that field. So they were using this, uh, this low dip in the field that's right in the middle. And so these branches that were right in front of me, I couldn't see right at about 125 to 150 yards. 
I couldn't see these deer coming into the field. And all of a sudden I looked up and the, there was a deer in the field, pulled out my laser range finder. I had her right at 150 yards, but she was just facing directly away from me. So I couldn't take a shot on her. So I was texting back and forth with Caleb uh, that I was gonna take the shot, give him a heads up. And she came up onto that ridge. So she went from moved from 150 to 160 yards. I knew that was gonna be right at seven mil dots. Pulled up on her, and this is what happened. Listen to this Mr. Hollow Point 525 grain slug hit her chest. Absolutely massive. So I figured it was a good clean shot. I saw her mule kick after I hit her. Wanted to give her a little bit of time before we got out of the blinds. Talk about baby, yeah! <laughs> yeah, it was a long shot, dude. Nice. Right there's 150. All right, so we found the part right here where she's uh, she churned it up when she ran after she was hit. So she's right through there. She ran right into there. She expired about 10 yards in. This is where she was standing. We are at, at come on, Reed. 160. 160, nice shot, man. 160. I held. Right there, vitals front quarter of the body. It's held seven mil dots. Man, <laughs> you heard that chest cavity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Those you Mr. put Hollow a good shot are, on her. Those Mr. Hollow points are. There's something else, man. man. Ah. <laughs> All right, so from there. What do you think, Kevin? Maybe 30 yards, 25 yards? 25 at the most. Nice. Yep. Nice, dude. All right. Man, look at her how dark yeah. she is. They said they're uh, shedding for the winter, getting their winter coat. That's a good size, dude. dude. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. All right, so she was quartered just a little bit. I hit her right here. That's the entry. And then we've got a Mr. Hollow Point expanded slug right here on the back side. Look at that. Yeah. Dude. Look <laughs> at that. Man, talk about expansion. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Bigger than my thumb. Yeah, it's like a 20 millimeter bullet. Nice job, Mr. Hollow Point. <laughs> These are pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, they are. So yeah, so basically entered here. Line of uh, path of travel. Basically took out both of her lungs. Probably took out the heart too. Yeah, you know? Probably, yeah. Uh... Yep, took out her heart too. So 20 yards, she's down. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Nice shot, man. Thanks, man. 163 <laughs> yards. Yeah. So she's got to be. She'll be running somewhere. Oh, I think I see the top of her. Yeah. <laughs> you get her? <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. She's in the biggest one, but hey. Hey. That's a deer. Nice. Look at that. Lehigh dropped her. Look at that. Man. Yep, yep, right here at the neck. Good job, buddy. Thanks, man. <laughs> she dropped, jumped about 10 feet in the air and dropped again. And that's all I saw over. That was sweet, dude. So yeah, it took us a while to get both of those deer pulled out of the field, but headed back to deer camp. Had Chad Simon from Lethal Air cooking up some backstrap with some really unique 
lethal air recipes, check it out. <laughs> so what's the recipe again, Chad? Moonshine and hot sauce. <laughs> 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 Did you just make that up? Yeah, I just came up with it. It's first time deal. Because <laughs> we don't have anything else. Do we? <laughs> no, so we don't have anything else. That's right. Moonshine. That plane. <laughs> oh, we gotta soak it real good. <laughs> real good. We gotta marinate it. Uh huh. This is an old family recipe for yes, Virginia, it is. right? Little yeah. Texas Pete. For the rest of you, that's what, about 35 dabs? Yeah, about yeah. 35 dabs. Okay. So. 36 will ruin it. That's yeah. right. It'll just be too spicy. <laughs> Get you a slab back strap. Poke around. Dip her down, spin her around. <laughs> Let her sit for a second, savor the flavor. Drop it in the pie. <laughs> and, hold her, and hold on to her, see what happens. That's how you fast cook it. <laughs> You can just smell the flavor. You can hear that. Medi smell, medium right? rare. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, little bloody in the middle, a little pink in the middle. That's awesome. Deer Camp 2020, Michigan, baby. That's right. That's how we do it. So there it is, Air Gunners, the early 2020 deer season uh, here in Michigan, the early antlerless deer season. So that shot I had on that doe was absolutely epic. That shot was literally. I'd say years in the making. I mean, all the long range stuff that I've been doing and doping that gun and knowing exactly what pressure, what velocity, what range, just having it all come together in that perfect shot and making sure the deer went down, you know, within 25 yards, it just makes it that much better. So a lot of these newer air guns that are coming out now from Air Force and some of the others that are getting up into that 800 foot pounds of energy, you know, it's, it's able to sling bigger, heavier projectiles at longer ranges. You know, if you're just getting into big bore air gunning, let's say you just, you know, shoot every once in a while, you just zeroed your gun, you're heading out, 100 yards and in, you're gonna be pretty confident that, you know, as long as you know where your zero is and with your drop is within 100, you're, you know, you're, you're gonna get a deer. It's, you're gonna be proficient with your tool. So there's a lot of us big bore air gunners that we're out there, we're shooting, you know, three, four times a week with our guns, testing different ammo, testing different velocities, testing different pressures. I'm finding, you know, this is an ever evolving sport, right? We've got new equipment that's coming into the sport like the Air Force Texan 50 cal and the 45 carbon fiber. So we're able to push ammo into that, you know, 600 to 800 foot pounds of energy just on bone stock guns, you know. So when I first got into this a couple years ago, that 100 yards and in uh, metric, I think was a pretty important thing. Um, but now, you know, we're pushing these slugs out further and further and further with these higher and higher powers. Being able to shoot even lighter ammunition, a lot flatter, shooting heavier ammunition with a higher ballistic coefficient even further. So for instance, if you've got an Air Force Texan 50 cal or the 45 carbon fiber, if you've been practicing with it all summer long, and if you feel proficient with your gun, you've got that shot doped, you know, it, the energy's there. I mean, we've proven it with this. Just get out there, learn your gun, dope your shots, know what it can do, know what it can't do. Learn the anatomy of an animal. I think that is the number one thing I think hunters often tend to not do a very good job of. I think a lot of us are, you know, you get online, you see those artistic representations of the anatomy of a deer. I think a lot of those artistic representations are, are kind of inaccurate. The lungs are a pretty big thing. If you actually look when you, uh, when you field dress an animal or get online and do a Google search for uh, inflated deer lungs, they pretty much take up the whole rib cage. So if you look at it, you know, the size of it, this is a, I'd call this is probably a medium sized doe that I got. You know, that rib cage is roughly probably 20 to 22 inches wide. And the vital zone within that, you know, probably a good eight inches. So, you know, if you can hit a target, you know, eight inches by 20 inches consistently, and you know your pressures, you know your drops. Then, you know, with a shot like this, it was almost a full pass through. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, get out there, pick up an Air Force Texan, get out there and hunt. Thanks everybody for joining me. This is Chris with Up North Air Gunner. Take care.